Oh man, I I have the best deck. I swear, I this is like my f new favorite draft deck. This thing was crazy good. Um, I flip flopped the configuration so much between games that I don't actually remember what the original config config was. But this right here is what it should have been. So, uh, notable things is that um, I am running Temple of Malady. I am not running anything green. It's just in there to help out Sensei's Divining Top. Um, I have Thing in the Ice which can be problematic if it returns um, cards like Brain Maggot and Mesmeric Fiend, except Mesmeric Fiend is a horror, so Thing in the Ice plays with Mesmeric Fiend nicely. So depending on if I felt I needed the early Brain Maggot, um, if I sideboarded this in, I tended to sideboard Thing in the Ice out because I didn't want to go giving my cards the cards back to the opponent. But otherwise, this was a really nice setup. And... Um, and then I occasionally I would sideboard in like a Necrotal if any more removal, Duress and Maggot, of course, and Rakdos if they were playing some kind of combo or control. Um, Necromancy, I sideboard in if they're playing Reanimator or if they just have a lot of big targets. Um, or if they're playing a lot of discard against me, where I can probably use Necromancy to recover. And uh, I don't think I ever sideboarded in Megas to the Moon. I think it was just too risky and too painful. But I suppose I thought, you know, maybe there was a. T uh, I, I might have sideboarded it in. But actually, I also never sideboarded in Maze of Ith. So these are the only cards that will be coming into the deck in the games that you see. These uh, six here. And these two are just possibles. Um, and of the rest of the cards that I didn't use. Um, as you can see, some were just encounter drafts. Some were early picks that I didn't I didn't know what I was facing. Um, all right, let's get to it. This deck is absolutely amazing. Um, and by the way, Thing in the Ice, incredibly good when you're running Yogmas Will and Mystical Tutor and uh, that sort of thing. So I want to show you some great, great games. So date and time today? No, last seven days. Okay, there we go. All right, so round one, game one. So I win the dice roll. I, I even checked these to see if they, oh, well, I was a little fast there. So anyway, I mulligan into this hand here. <coughs> and I probably tuck Tezzeret because it's not really, it's a little bit slow. My opponent's leading off with Ponder. <coughs> yeah, I did. So go turn two Delver um, top, which seems like pretty reasonable. And then turn three, I believe with Delver on the stack. Yeah, I mystical. I make so this, and early on, I make some judge, error judgments. I think so. I mystical for demonic, flipping the insect, and then I demonic for arena. So what is it? I'm just going to use arena to recover from how far behind I am on cards, and it, then I've got pressure on him plus card drawing, and it should you know work out fine. And I was willing to blow two tutors on that sort of thing because I have Snapcaster, and I'll get one back as soon as I lay land. Uh, my opponent, however. Basalt Monolith, Talarian Academy, Gilded Lotus, Oth Othio Ophiomancer, holy smokes. So I decide that his start, so it was a tough call here. I, I don't know if I, in hindsight, if I made the right call. Maybe I did not. It's really hard to say. My thinking was, um, if I can get that Gilded Lotus away from him. I can improve my mana situation drastically by stealing it with Dak Faden. It'll cost him three mana of any color plus an plus one from the academy. And then in a couple turns Dak could potentially steal another card. Um so I decide that what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna preemptively demonic tutor for Dak Faden and then use uh presumably use or between arena and top I'll find um <laughs> the man, the man I need to cast Dak Faden. My opponent plays Grave Titan. So, and I've just blown my Demonic Tutor. So, yikes! So I look with top, and oh yeah, Terminus on the top. So I go ahead and, I mean, terminate rather. So I terminate that, hit him for three more um, Grave Titan. I actually had access to pulling Grave Titan and passed it. Um, wasn't feeling too happy about that right now. And then he plays Inkwell Leviathan. So, I mean, this is just, like, absurd. It, it's almost like he's playing Type 1 over there, and I'm playing, like, Legacy. So my Legacy deck's trying to beat his Type 1 deck. So uh, not looking too good. I can't take Inkwell Leviathan. So I knew Kalidus was on top because of the, the 
early top activation. Anyway, I can't take Inkwell Leviathan with Dak. I don't even have the mana to do it if I wanted to. I'm chumping and forgetting that it tramples as if it needed to do more. <laughs> Sadisi uh, exploits. He plays Ujin, and yeah, I scoop it up. So that was game one. So I was feeling pretty unhappy and thought I might be scrubbing out of the event right now. But I do have this nice hand, so we're going to keep it. It's got the tutor chain and reverse tutor chain. Um, were you mystical? I could mystical and into demonic, but I just decided to wait. And look what I drew. The greatest thief in the multiverse. <laughs> so the problem was I didn't want to... I didn't want to do the tutor for demonic trick because I was going to be short red and I was hoping that I could just steal. When he played the mox, I thought, okay, well, I'll just steal the mox diamond and that's how I'll get my black. Because I'm either short red or short black, right? So, but um, then he played, of course, this thing. So now, look, I can get two black for a Phyrexian Arena. That's pretty nice. But he fences it back to his hand. So, um, upkeep, I uh, Mystical Tutor. I dack, or no, after I draw a Mystical Tutor and then I dack to get the card I tutored for, I wanted to hopefully just, you know, draw into it. Um, and uh, I believe the card I tutored for was Spell Pierce because I didn't want him to replay the thing. Um, and I have a trick here. So I want, I'm trying to keep Dak alive so I can steal another Mox. So I want to trade um, Snappy for the Venser. And I'm thinking that maybe he has expensive counters or something or he'll put make a play and then leave some man open for a counter and then i can cast snap you know it, it gives me a possibility of snapping into a block of Venser. and uh i can spell pierce if he has like a, a an expensive counter i can spell pierce and um get the snapcaster down i won't be able to flashback mystical tutor but i'd rather just kill a Venser with um, snapcaster here and worry about flashing back mystical tutor using Ogmos will later so that's the that was the thinking. So I go for it. Um, he doesn't actually have. So he doesn't play into my spell pierce, and because he knows I have spell pierce, so like he he has to play around the spell pierce, and yet I've targeted mystical tutor, so I'm gonna mystical if he doesn't make me use the spell pierce. Um, so since I have DAC, of course, I don't use spell pierce on that, and then I figure I'm just gonna clear the way with the rest, and I see the DC which doesn't help me much, although it is information, so information helps. I plus two Dak Faden, and look what I see. Mesmeric Fiend, but I don't have black yet. So I'm done. And if he gets a creature to exploit with that Sadisi, then I'm really, really in trouble. And look at, he doesn't just get any creature. He gets Op Ophiomancer, but he gets greedy. So he wants to exploit the Death Touch token, and then get a new one rather than kill his Ophiomancer and immediately just tutor for whatever would win him the game. Now the funny thing is if he had done that, I could have taken it out of his hand, but he still would have had a huge creature in play. By being greedy and going this route, look, the only card in his hand is the exploit creature. We're going to we're gonna pinch it right now. So first I'm going to try to take his mana. He, he, he tapped it wisely, so fine. Bam. Card from hand. So now, so he's in top deck mode and he top decks into Ponder. That's unfortunate. Goes for uh, Dak Faden. Of course, I'm going to let him die. I've got Will anyway. He's got Lingering Souls with Flashback that he pondered into. Ouch. I mean, I've got some time, but I don't have a ton of time. However, Thing in the Ice shows up to the party. So, uh, and I felt like here, um, I, I have a plan for Yogmas Will, so I cannot, I cannot actually play the uh, Phyrexian Arena here. So I'm going to take a bunch of damage, charge a Relic, uh, draw a Liliana, but that's not particularly helpful right now. So now we get to Yogwill, play Dak, go after a Mox, which is two mana sources for him, um, which and, and nerfs his color, and clearly he's using these alternate mana sources for color. And then I Duress and Spell Pierce the Duress. So Thing in the Ice is now at one counter. Dak Faden, of course, is going to die. I can at least block there. And my hope was I was going to... So the, the whole plan there was banking on finding a finding a uh, instant before I died. 
And the very next card's Collective Brutality. I make one mistake here. So I choose um, to escalate this um, by, um, I think, no, I choose to duress him. And the correct play here was to kill the Ophiomancer. And that may end up hurting me quite a bit, actually. He has nothing Ophiomancer in the Sphinx. So I'm going to um, go ahead and just play Phyrexian Arena. And I'm watching his mana in case I need to use Wasteland, because I know he's got that Sphinx. Unfortunately, because I didn't kill this stupid thing, now I've got to deal with it again. Naturally, I just draw a Dramonic Tutor, like a champ. So how about if we take it? And then I I don't know, I, I guess because I just wanted to push for damage, but I, I take his... And I, I talk right there. I take his Snake, which allows him to get another Snake, which it's not that good. I did at least get the arena down, so there's that. Um, and then I find a Lava Claw Reaches. So I had a Brain Maggot. I could have gone for his... I'd sideboarded in against him. I could have gone for his uh, other card in his hand, but I decided to just play the Lava Claw Reaches and then Liliana with an empty hand and just do it that way. So he's got nothing. He plays a White Land finally, and there's my, there's my Wasteland target. Fortunately, I saved it. So, because he has no cards in hand, the outcome here is inevitable. I um, subtract from Liliana, pump the heck out of my man land, and smash with my horror. Dead. On to game three. All right. So, yeah, Thing in the Ice and uh, Mystical is pretty nice, but he's got an early Mox and an Ophiomancer. I'm not afraid of Ophiomancer. Um, I was, so I was thinking that what I would do is I would Demonic Tutor for, um, okay, so I'm going to pause. So I wanted a Mystical for Demonic and then Demonic for Dak, right? But the thing is, with with Thing in the Ice in my hand, a turn two Thing in the Ice, turn three, Mystical into Demonic, and then Dak, and then Will, and do all that business, uh, would have resulted in a huge 7-8 beating his face in. So for tempo purposes, I actually slow myself down, and it turns out to pay huge dividends when he dazes the thing in the ice. Because he would have dazed either the tutor or the tutor, most likely the demonic tutor, and that would have been <coughs> unbelievably punishing. As it is now, <coughs> excuse me, the only one getting punished is going to be him. So first, I'm going to just Dak his guy. So even though I could even though I could bonfire and clear the way and then Dak Faden, he's getting too much mana, and it's worthwhile to let Dak die since I have Will and I can just replay him anyway. Um, I don't want to... Uh, I do not want him to get built up on mana, but also um, stealing a Mox means that the Yagmos will is even more playable, as is the bonfire. And look, he plays that naming uh, Mox Diamond, so how fortunate for me. Smash. I should have played Temple there. It was a misplay. Uh, I think I was trying to play around like a day, uh, not days, but a uh, four spike, but I, I don't know. That was, it was just dumb. And then right after I bonfire, he, he draws, linger, he, he casts Lingering Souls. So... <coughs> But he doesn't have enough mana to flash it back. So hoping that I can get him to walk into the bonfire here, I'm going to hit me in the face even though I'm at 9. And he does. He feels like he wants to finish me off, so perfect. All right, so we're just going to bonfire for exactly enough and only enough um, because I have other things I want to do, like deploy a Delver. And I again, I'm trying to play around. And then he mind twists me. I set up this whole game for that will like that's what the gameplay was and then he mind twists me so all of a sudden things are not looking too great i'm mana flooded he's he's mana short and i know he's got a lot of big mana cards but um i mean that just could not have been more timely i guess well it could have been earlier but considering like how that was going to play out so i i hold steam vents i'm gonna always hold the land and look at he's got black lotus so 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 far this guy's played black lotus mind twist that's horrible for me. I, I did a uh, top deck of land, though. So he, he lotuses a Koldotha Forge Master out. I think just because, well, first of all, I'm low on time. Secondly, he just needs to beat me down. So I'm, I'm fighting both the clock and my life total. But he just needs to beat me down a few times, and then he's got this game wrapped up. And he just does not run out of gas. 
Sedisis it away and demonic tutors with the Sedisi effect, with the exploit effect. So I am in so much trouble now. But look at that rip. My turn to rip. Take some face damage. I cannot flip this Delver for anything, but if you're not going to flip a Delver, doing it with a Vettelkin Shackles seems like a pretty good reason. And then, <laughs> this is hilarious. So he treacheries Delver because... So if you treachery Sidisi, I just untap Shackles and take it. But if he takes the Delver, then all he has to do is flip it and he can go face for three, face for three, and he can win. <coughs> so it's super clever play. I get Ashiok, so... Um, it exiles, uh, look at this, Mana Confluence, Guild Lotus, Ujin. This, this guy's deck's nuts. And look, I held a card for Collective Brutality. He didn't flip Delver anyway, so I Brutality, pitching a land, and do two face and kill his creature. I haven't seen too much of somebody going face with this card. Anyway, um, Ashok hits Inkwell, Leviathan, and a Winter Orb. Crazy, crazy deck. Black Lotus. Gilded Lotus, Winter Orb, Ujin, all kinds of madness over there. Mind Twist is gross. Treachery. And I managed to beat it with my Legacy deck. <laughs> well, it looks like a Legacy deck, but then again, it's got Mystical, Demonic, and Yogwill. And those three cards are pretty doggone good. So anyway, uh, that was game three, I believe. I believe that was round one. So round two. Now, you want to talk about good decks. Wait till you see the decks, the other two decks that I'm facing. The amount of like insane stuff that I'm, my opponents are doing in these games is like, it was just completely mind boggling. Like seriously, the greatest thief in the multiverse saves the day yet again over and over and over in these games. That's the theme. Dak Faden, probably the best card in cube. Okay, Ancestral Recall is the best card in cube, but it's pretty doggone good. So I still I could have stole any of his I could have stolen any of his mana sources. Um, I took Orzov's Signet because it cuts him off from a color, and I don't know what he's doing yet. Uh, mana Vault he would just tap in response, and then I would be ticking down damage for very little good reason. But also I needed a second black for Liliana, so this actually helped me out quite a bit. He plays a hexproof. Flying Dragon, whatever shall I do? Well, I'm going to plus up Dak first, and then I discard uh, Island and a Mountain, and best away his Dragon, and continue to aggressively attack his mana base. And look at this. He goes for Trinket Mage. He's still got Vault, Selesnya, Plains. And he, he fetches a uh, Pything Needle. So he's going to Pything Needle either Dak or Vess, right? But here's the thing. If I spell pierce the Pything Needle, he's down to one card in hand. So if he wants the Pything Needle to resolve, and I'm sure he does, um, <coughs> he's got to tap Mana Vault. So this is going to steal uh, a number of turns, at least whatever he might have done this turn, plus probably whatever he might do next turn um, at a minimum. So uh, this plucky little deck just fights on. He names Dak Faden, of course. Uh, so I actually steal Trinket because I've got to protect Liliana. He's got one card in hand. And I am willing to trade a Collective Brutality for one card, I believe. Yeah. And it's Bribery. Holy smokes. I dodged a bullet there. All right, so uh, Mana Vault. He doesn't pay here, so free damage. I'll take it. And plays Gideon. Man, what's with my opponent's top decking? All right, so I have to attack Gideon now, but... If you noticed, I played a Lava Claw Reaches last turn, so, I mean, I guess if I have to attack Gideon, here we go. Smash him down to one. He can't even kill one of my creatures. Um, I'm not going to plus Liliana. I've seen people do this. I think it's absolutely idiotic. People plus up Liliana when they have cards and the other guy doesn't just to try to hope for an ultimate. It's completely stupid, I think. <coughs> Unless you fear an untargetable creature that you know your opponent's going to play or something makes no sense at all and for me here throwing away an arena just to maybe do something later it makes yeah it's just not gonna happen so the beauty of it though is he's in kind of a trap so if he untapped vault this turn and did not let's say he untapped vault and then could not play the card in his hand because he untapped vault then i get to take it with liliana if he doesn't untap vault 
and he draws his card and he can play it, well then he 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 never gets to reaccess his vault. So he's got to so he's got to do this play here where he, he actually has to attack Liliana with Gideon because um because otherwise he's stuck under this like this com kind of like back and forth between vault and uh, draw phase. So he does manage to kill. Um, so I, this was a mistake here. So I should not have. I should not have the rest. I was I was a little worried that he had some kind of instance as he had all that mana and didn't spend it. But I should have waited. And the reason I should have waited is if I would have waited for him to untap the mana vault um, next turn, he would untap the mana vault, draw, and if he drew like a card that he couldn't cast because he just untapped the mana vault, that's the turn to hit him with the duress. So I should have waited one turn and then duress him. Um, but you know, as I said, I was a bit, I was a bit worried. I really wanted the arena to resolve. I really didn't want Gideon to live. I wanted to make sure he would die this turn, so I threw the duress out there. Um, and at least now I know what he's got coming. So, um, given that I know and have no real other options here anyway, I'm just gonna throw everything into my man land, hit him as hard as I can. He's gonna um, take his creature back, but it's gonna die before he gets it back. So that's at least something. And then right back to stealing your crap. <laughs> it's so, this text is so mean, man. I've just been doing nonstop stealing. And he gives up. <coughs> so I believe that was, I believe that was game one. Yeah, okay, so game two is not so pretty. I had to mulligan, and I mulligan into this hand. It's super sketchy. Now, drawing the spell pairs gives me a little bit of comfort, but he doesn't have his... Where's his fast start over there? He doesn't have it. So I'm not going to run Shackles out into um, two blue that's wide open. I was really hoping I could have tagged a Signet right there. Um, the nice thing here, though, is I got this thing in the Ice House, so the spell pairs represents at least a counter on the thing. And he plays this guy. Oh, crap. So I'm going to go Shackles and hope... <sighs> and that's exactly why but I didn't play Sower, by the way. Um, so I'm able to spell pierce. He's going to get some guys here, but with shackles, um, a few guys that he gets, it's not going to matter in the long run. So, or I thought he's got monastery mentor opposition. This is just unbelievably brutal. So I'm going to tap in response, steal mentor, of course, checking to make sure it's not a legend first. I mean, how, how much worse would it be if it were? Um, so this is pretty like, I'm now facing opposition, um, and my opponent's got hellish Norn. Like, really? Like, how, how much, like, what am I supposed to do here? Um, I refuse to give up is what I'm supposed to do, so that's what I do. And I rip a red off the top. I cannot believe I ripped that red off the top. Thing in the Ice is now down a counter again, and that red's also a blue, so... Tap in response. Tap in response. Steal your Archmage. We're soldiering on valiantly trying to do something with um, all these permanents getting tapped every turn. Well, Snapcaster gives me an option with Terminate, but oh my gosh. Gideon Jur, are you kidding me? Like, like, does this dude, he's got no cards in hand. He's just, he's just the bomb ripper. However, this, this deck is so resilient. So I bonfire for one here because for some reason he does not tap my red. Redirecting some of the damage to Gideon and clearing out some of his tappers, which is huge for me. And then, of course, he rips Treasure Cures. Into a ref wing. And domes me with a Gideon. Which was a little bit odd, but um, that's fine, I suppose. And look at that top tech. So I could have played Ashiok here, but I decide that the thing to do is to reduce the number of things that he can tap my cards with. He then peels his shackles and kills the sower so with Gideon. So now, um, but it gives me a window to get out um, Rakdos's return. So I Rakdos's return for two, which takes a mana vault out of his hand and allows my angel to kill his Gideon. 
So I had a lot of different ways I could have played this out, and I, I certainly could have gotten Ashiok on the table earlier. Um, the fact that Pything Needle has pinned down my um, shackles means that he was planning to kill his own angel, and then he wouldn't have his guys get stolen anymore after that. So I needed Gideon to die now, and that's the reasoning behind why I did made made the plays I did. And because he used opposition aggressively with Gideon in order to kill um, my creature earlier. Uh, to kill my sower and get his uh, rift wing back, um, but it came back to him tapped. That's what allowed me to make this play this turn. So I'm not going to get another window for a little while. And I'm one mana short of shield rid, so um, I couldn't have done anything with that anyway. There's also a major problem with playing shield rid, but um, I'll let you figure that one out. Fortunately, my opponent does not, as you will see later. It's quite funny. So, okay, he's going to bribery my Dragon Lord. So, I mean, consider the trajectory of this game. This guy's plays are, are just so absurd. Like, I'm trying to deal with a Monastery Mentor, Elish Norn, Opposition, uh, this freaking angel that grows and pumps all of his Mentor tokens, a, an Ancestral Recall, basically, a Gideon Jura, and he gets to bribery away my dragon lord this is so gross but i can at least try my best to do something and so that's what i'll do i will try my best to do something so i snapcaster and terminate the dragon which will retrieve his angel back to my side see if i untap the shackles to try and take it again of course it won't work because of pything needle and uh <coughs> he he couldn't use Caracas there to bounce the dragon for any value because he would have gone back to my hand. So of course, empty hand guy, top decks, trinket mage into hanger back walker on three. My goodness, this is bad. And then I don't know what he is thinking. Inexplicably decides I, I thought, okay, well maybe I can see what he's doing. I made a lot of plays with black, so tap down all four of my black sources. No, no, black, black, angel. Okay, so I assume the next tap here is red. Doesn't tap anything? Holy smokes. Thank you for the hanger back, Walker. I really appreciate it. All right, well, Dak Faden's dead, but this has been a game of nonstop theft and kill. It's insane. So, and then look at that rip. Boom, down comes the shieldred. And if you're paying attention... What should happen is up goes the shieldred, but he's not paying attention. <laughs> and that's what I was hoping for. I, I really didn't have any other decent target for Tezzeret at that point in the game, I don't think. I had, uh, what was the other card that I, I could have fetched with? <coughs> I only have a couple fetch targets, one of them being uh, Shackles. Oh, Sensei's Divining Top. I mean, you could have fetched Sensei's Divining Top, but that hardly like really swings a game. Um, I could have played Ashiok and tried, I mean, he's down to 14 cards in his deck and Ashiok and tried to rush, um, rush mill him, which is pretty reasonable. And that might've been the best play, but, um, I decided to just take a chance. The chance being that my opponent had Krakus sitting over there doing nothing for so long that he wasn't going to see it and it works and, uh, that's it. Game over. So he loses a creature. I don't know if he drew and then realized he could have bounced my guy. At that which point, it's it's far, far too late because now it's half. Like if he bounces it now, then I just play it on my turn. He has to sack another guy and then he bounces it. And then, you know, that that's never going to work out now. Uh, or if he just didn't see that he could bounce it at all, in which case on my turn, uh, I've got a dragon lord uh, about to pop out and shake his hand or a sower. So uh, either way. Man, super satisfying win. I mean, seriously, that was like everything under the sun being thrown at me. So I figured after the two people I just faced, the first guy who had like the mind twist and whatever the other card was, it was ridiculous. And then this guy who was doing all kinds of shenanigans with the moxes and whatnots, uh, I felt like, okay, the third guy has got to be easier. Like, he's got to be the guy that's like the mono green deck who's going to get wrecked by my black deck, right? So, with that in mind, I keep a pretty good hand. And he's off with Island. So, okay, he's not mono green, but I've got some disruption. So, we'll go that route. Oh, my gosh. I should have paused it. Um, 
His hand was crazy. Dig through time, compulsive research. I don't know what else. Impulse. Um, out of all the cards in his hand, I figure I'd take compulsive because it'll fuel dig through time. And also, he had plenty of lands. He had two more lands. Um, whereas impulse is just a, a, a brief dig. So I, yeah, so I select compulsive and leave him with, yeah, he had a baleful strix that I have to leave him with, which I just disfigure so I can get in for a point of damage because what else am I going to do? And then he just proceeds to rip soul ring and soul rings into Jace. So I have to decide what to give him. So I give him um, murderous cut or control magic in an island. He takes control magic on an island. And I top deck an island. Yes! Ashiok machine go to town so i hit his jace down a little bit so he plays a mall drifter ashiok again so let's take a look at what we're exiling over there hero's downfall got nailed by that so good so i drew vetokan shackles off the top so i was thinking i'd snapcaster to kill his hold on i was thinking i was going to snapcaster to kill his uh, mall drifter but when i drew shackles i realized that i could just let ashiok tank the mall drifter and i could use shackles to steal mall drifter so um I, so that was the plan. So then I draw another card, and I've got some very wicked idea in mind. But I'm a mana short from doing it. So we'll continue. Ashok this time nails a Worm Coil and what? A Mana Crypt? So look at this guy. Balance, Mana Crypt. So remember when I thought Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, Balance? Remember when I thought that the, the third guy would be the easy one? Oh no. No. Not even slightly. So I steal his Maul Drifter, and he doesn't attack, which is fine. I can see why you wouldn't want to trade here, but but um, so awesome. So he, he can't... now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got Consecrated Sphinx also, by the way, on top of all that other stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. He's also drawing three cards per turn, plus he's Jacing. And then he Massacre Worms and gets his Compulsive back from the Mesmeric. But look at his deck. 11 cards. It's getting a little thin. Ashiok saying... You know what? You can draw extra cards. Uh, all I need to do is stall. Of course, it's going to be really hard to stall against a Massacre Worm. So, uh, he actually had to discard two cards. Discard Sheldock Isle and Compulsive. And I rip a land, which is so key, because I get to make a super techie play. Snapcaster, shrink your guy, give him to me, and let me draw some more cards. Also, I Ashiok him again. Hit it with Mind Slaver now. He's got control magic, which I knew. Remember, I gave him the control magic, not the murderous cut. But I'm not worried about it. Because I, I don't care. He's down to five cards in library. I'm not even trying to control, actually, like, board control this. I'm just trying to win. Besides, I'm about to play an island and take it back. He thought seizes away my terminate. A chump. Plays a hypnotic specter. Oh, my gosh. I hit more cards. Look, he's got another Jace in his deck. And so I actually just play Galitas here, take his Consecrated Sphinx, draw two extra cards, and this guy's got to be super frustrated. He uses Jace and, and gives up. Like, that has to be so frustrating if you're this guy. Like, his draw was incredible. My draw was just complete crap, but Ashiok just, com just totally owns him. And I'm looking through his deck, you know, from what we've seen, he has Hero's Downfall and then nothing. He has, like... One card that will save him from Ashiok. So that becomes the name of the game. So in game two, I have an, I have an opening Ashiok. I'm golden. I should win this. No problem. There's turn thought sees. And he doesn't take Ashiok. What is going on here? This is amazing. Oh, he's going to tinker in a worm coil. Well, I've, I've got possible outs. Right, it's uh, ugly, it's gross, but I, I sideboarded in Necromancy. Remember I was saying like I had this weird um, suite of cards? Well, he, he thought seized away uh, a Sower. So I Mystical for Demonic and Demonic for Necromancy, which was sideboarded in for this kind of shenanigans. Thinking what I'll do is I'll just reanimate Sower. And then look at this. He's got one card left. He's used Tinker, Mox, thought seize, and everything. One card left, he balances. So uh, he's going to sack a land, but I have to discard all the way down to one. Well, I have to keep the Necromancy. It's the only way I can win, which means I lose Ashiok, which is actually how I won. Uh, so, yeah. And if I don't rip a land soon, none of it's going to matter. Also, his Worm Coil turns into two creatures. Now, the good thing here is instead of stealing the Worm Coil, I'll just steal the Worm Coil directly with the Necromancy. 
Uh, no, no top decking. And he top decks a Jace. Oh my gosh. So if I can get a red, all I have to do, I can steal. He's going to think he has a blocker. I can take his blocker and then that's it. Game over, right? Spell Pierce seems pretty useless right now. Until he does this. Oh, yeah. And then he force the wells. Okay, I guess, uh, you know, it was good, but, you know, I guess if you have all the things. So, just to be clear, this is the guy who has uh, Mox Emerald. Uh, this is the guy with Mox Emerald, Tinker, Balance, Force of Will, Soul Ring, Mana Crypt? What the heck, man? And here I'm playing with my pseudo legacy deck, but I am trying my damnedest to pull this game out. Uh, and I think we're going to bug out here, and if that's the case, I think it's okay. So I Yog Will here, and what I do is I replay Swamp, and I disfigure his uh, Hypnotic Spectre. I'm still holding out hope. So if I could just draw a mountain, there's no mountains out here, by the way. If I could just draw a freaking mountain, um, I can. So, uh, so here's the thinking. I, I replay this swamp and I disfigure this. And then the thought is, I'm going to Snapcaster. So I'm going to take uh, nine. The next turn, I'm going to Snapcaster, chump the Worm Coil um, with the Snapcaster, but I'll Demonic Tutor for the mountain I need for Dak Faden. And then I can steal the Worm Coil. And then I'm in business. The problem is, I'll be taking three and three. I take nine, which so drops me down to five, then three from the unblocked. And then by the time I steal the Worm Coil, it's tapped. And then I take three more and I die. So that's kind of how that game proceeds. Now let's hope game three actually plays out. Oh, please don't bug out. So lead off with Island. I've got Mystical Tutor. I'm gonna Mystical. I I'm gonna Mystical in response. I think that getting I think that getting uh, a Planeswalker is more valuable than than trying to trick him into taking Mystical over the arena. So I go for Ashok since I know that he has very little ways. You know, as far as I know, he only has one way to deal with it. So we get it. And I nail a Mox, which hopefully slowed him down a bit. I also have underneath it a, a, a big creature. I, there goes his Soul Ring. Dude's got everything. I feel like I'm playing Legacy against Type 1. The only thing, so, and then I get Tezzeret out and I fetch for top, thinking I'll, I'll fetch Shackles later. So at some point I decide, okay, so then he gets Mind Slaver, which, okay, I'm going to lead off with, I've sideboarded in all the disruption I can think of. So I, I take Murderous Cut and then uh, steal his, uh, steal his uh, Slaver, and then I use, uh, I put, I, I peek with top and I like what I see, so I put Maul Drifter into play with Ashok's ability. Kind of regret it because he draws Zero's Downfall, which I would have mil milled off. And he's got answers for all this stuff. But I do have a Mind Slaver, and he's got a Jason too. So I'm going to steal, uh, and it's, and then I miss the attack, uh, Brain Maggot here. So I, Vess, I use Vess and a Sower to steal a guy and then kill a guy. And then he plays Sheldock Isle and Worm Coil. So now I'm going to pause for a second because Sheldock Isle, he's, this is a threat. So he's low on time. He's low on cards in his deck. He's low on cards in hand. And he's got this Sheldock Isle. So I figure this is a chance for him to win the game. So this is where I want to um, slaver him because I want to use whatever's under that Sheldock Isle. Also, I finally got him to use the Jace. So now I can mind slaver him and and kill the Jace in the process of giving me cards. So I go ahead and um, plus Vess here, throwing away a uh, uh, swamp, slaver him, and I see triple land. So I'm setting up for a big will. So I go ahead and just draw a land and then uh, play Delver. And while I'm at it, I hit him for two. So this is what he's got in his hand: desecration, demon, hallowed. And then underneath, oh my gosh, pause. So underneath Sheldock was Dig Through Time. So um, so remember, I'm controlling his turn. So I make, I have him force me to draw my Sensei's Divining Top and kill his Jace. And then I'm going to uh, probably slam his, I was trying to figure out the best way to do this. So 
He's got... I mean, this deck is just absurd. So anyway, I'm digging through time, and this is what's in his library. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I don't know what the bottom card is, but none of this actually is going to save him from losing the game. So my, my plan here is just to make sure he loses as fast as possible. So I was trying to figure out the best way to do it. And the right answer, I think, is to play... Uh, is to grab Tinker and Compulsive. Then have him attack Worm Coil into Strix. Um, kill his Strix and his Worm Coil. He'll get two creatures. Have him uh, Tinker away one of the creatures and turn it into a uh, Mana Crypt, which will should damage him over time. Then have him... Um, Compulsive research the mana crypt, or excuse me, have him. Yeah, the other option was to play this creation demon, but I didn't, I didn't really like that. And then have him um, compulsive research into three more cards, and then have him discard the two best cards in his hand, and leave him with a hand of junk, a deck that was super depleted, um, a mana crypt in play that's going to be damaging him, only one little worm coil dork. Um, Probably which who I can just kill with uh, with Vess, and before I can do it, he scoops it up. So fantastic! So my little uh, scrappy little pseudo legacy deck that just happens to have three restricted cards of of extremely high power, but still, those are my three restricted. And I guess yeah, Wasteland isn't even restricted. And I'm facing against Soul Rings, Moxes, and all that crazy crap. Manages to go and win 240 points. So I'm at, sitting at a nice 298. Too short. It's crazy. 298. Too short of actually having three guaranteed drafts. It's a little annoying. The other thing that sucks is uh, I had saved up from previous Legacy events. And my understanding was that the Mox points were um, did not expire. And I had something like 30-something Mox points saved up. And since my understanding was that they don't expire, I didn't push hard to try to accumulate enough to enter the Mox tournament. And then uh, I took a peek, and all of a sudden, all the Mox points are gone. So for free-to-play players, having something like this that you can't cash in unless you get enough, uh, this is pretty brutal it's it's really damning like the amount of playing i have to do you know three hours per mox point and i only get one every couple of um drafts i mean i basically can go infinite here but i just won't get like i mean like i said i had like i think i had like 30 something but i i, I didn't have enough for the tournament and the fact that they expire back even though back then they said they didn't is uh pretty pretty brutal so anyway that's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed um, seeing all these different, you know, we saw a dress come in, Necrotal, it all came in. I think the only card that didn't actually, I take it back, I don't think Toxic Deluge ever came in, but all the rest did. So, I hope you enjoyed seeing that. Um, this uh, was a lot of fun to play and uh, record, and I appreciate all the support I've been getting from everybody. Uh, with the holidays um, upon us imminently, I probably will not be making any videos for a little while because uh, it's family time and I'm going to be focused on that. So thanks for watching. Merry Christmas if you celebrate it and I'll see you next time.